Hey everyone, I hope you've been well and happy fall. We have a little addition to the desk setup today. And as you can see, we have a lot of journals and planners that I'm going to be reviewing for this video specifically because we are at the tail end of 2024. And I know you're curious about some of the journals and planners I've been using this year and hopefully it will allow you to have a better idea of whether or not you'd like to include these into your 2025 planner and journal setup. But to make it more organized, I've come up with four specific things that I'll talk about for every specific notebook. So this will be the specs. Specs meaning like size, paper type, um, layout, and things like that. The second one being whether or not the planner or journal or notebook served its purpose based on what I initially intended for it to be used for at the start of the year. The third one will be the frequency of use. I want to say it's whether or not I reach for that specific planner or journal often within my workflow or within my documenting process. And last but not the least, the verdict is whether or not I will use it again next year or carry it over next year. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. This candle is actually from a Filipino brand called Saan Saan. And it's called The Archaeologist's House. It smells really good. I super like anything that has like woodsy scents. I actually was debating between this one and this one that I've lit up um, recently. This is from Brooklyn Candle Studio. It's called Montana Forest. Also, I'm just so happy that it is officially cardigan season. I got a new cardigan that I've been really loving and it's very comfy. It's from a US brand called Everlane. So yeah, let's light this up and let's get to reviewing. Let's start with my Muji A5 planner. I initially intended for this to be like a work planner per se, like running to-dos, especially if I'm working from home, which is I would say like 80% of the week. And I want to show you some of the pages I've done. I think in general, I was able to really keep this up for a time, especially if I'm not working elsewhere or I'm not traveling, you'll see that the reason there are a lot of like blank uh, pages is because I am traveling or I've been out and about for a while. Um, did it serve its purpose? I think to an extent it did because I remember when I started this in January, I was very dead set on like having all my to-dos like put on these specific um, areas like depending on the day. The only problem is the flexibility didn't work for me in a sense that, for example, if I have a task on Tuesday that I didn't manage to finish, I use the bullet journal technique to kind of migrate it. But then the consequence of that is I just copy it to the next day. So I feel like if the more I don't do it, the more I copy it up to Friday. And then if I don't do it, I end up like doing it on Monday and stuff like that. So I don't know, it felt redundant to me to an extent. This planner also had like a year overview, which obviously I did not use. And I'm just very bad at like monthly overviews as well. I think with monthly, I just mostly use a Google Calendar or a digital calendar because that's where I keep track of all my meetings and deadlines. But yeah, as you can see, I actually have not updated this diligently since September, since I got back. I feel like I've been all over the place with my to-dos and at least like logging it here. I do log it somewhere else, which I'll talk about later. So yeah, frequency of use on that note is I do reach it from time to time if I'm working. But as you can see in the later months, I didn't use it as much. So I feel like I peaked some sometime in like April, May when I had like a lot of going ongoing deadlines. Will I use it next year? I'm not gonna use it next year. I've thought long and hard about this. I don't know what else will replace this, but 
I think for the most part it being not so expensive I think this was only like ten dollars because I bought it in Japan um, then I felt like oh it's not I don't feel as bad like not using it perpetually so yeah I did like it but in terms of just the longevity and like whether or not it's sustainable it didn't feel sustainable for me next let's talk about the elephant in the room Hobonichi Weeks Last year, I diligently used my Hobonichi Weeks. This year, I unfortunately have abandoned it for my plotter. Plot twist. Um, specs, you know, Hobonichi Weeks is a household name in the journaling community and planning community here on YouTube and in general. Everyone loves a good Hobonichi Weeks. It's very compact, as you can see. Um, this one was very special because it's the Moomin edition and I felt so bad that I did not use it as much as I wanted to. You know, it just happens. Um, did it serve its purpose? I'll show you a couple of pages and I guess you can say that it did serve its purpose, especially during the time that I got this, which was around March. Um, the main purpose of this was really like personal admin and not necessarily work tasks. That's why I have a separate work planner. But as you can see, I also started to write expenses. I was a bit more uh, persistent on budgeting this year as um, frequency of use. I did use it for a time a lot. I don't know how frequent I would use it or grab it from my desk area, but it's always open, especially if I need to plan out specific uh, projects that more like personal stuff, you know, like change wardrobe, buy this, work out and everything. So you'll see it here. Also had a time where I was very diligent with my workouts and I was logging everything, but alas, it just didn't work out the way I had hoped for. And you'll see how abandoned it is because I already started using it for like ink logs, which I think I might do um, because the paper is nice and I think it's a good way to kind of flip through ink samples. But yeah, use next year, no, I was deciding very much on if I needed a Hobonichi Weeks. I did see a lot of colors I liked, but I'm not going to be using it next year. Next, let's talk about my project planner. This is the Hobonichi Day Free in the original size, which is A6. And I kind of DIY'd it. I covered it with Van Gogh sunflowers. At the back, we have my 2024 calendar print from my Patreon mail. And what this initially was, was like a meetings notebook. And I'm gonna show you some pages so you can have an idea. Meetings notebook, log of everything that I kind of just like run of the mill ideas. You know, I had my workshop cheat sheet, um, I don't know, draft. I think I really use this a lot in a sense of like, my brain is literally dumped on this specific notebook. You'll see I do a lot of brainstorming in general. I feel like a big chunk of my work week relies on me coming up with ideas and turning them into whatever content you see or like a Patreon post or an Instagram post or a video or anything in those like formats. Once you have used, I would say I used it a lot. Like when I traveled, I brought this with me because again, it's very compact. And it's very loose, you know, I don't really have any commitment with like, I know it has page numbers, but I actually don't really use it for that. I want to say that I don't know if I want to use it again next year. As you can see, I'm not like it's already October and I still have like a bunch of pages. I was actually worried that I'd run out. But um, again, I did not use the monthly which I feel bad about. Initially, I wanted to use it as like a way to track my days off, but I never do it. So it really just didn't end up being useful at all. Um, will I use the same one next year? Probably not, but I would like to have like a notebook where I could just dump everything like this as well. And since I'm not gonna use the work planner, I actually have no idea yet what my general work dump notebook will be and that's something i will keep out in the open until probably november december once i decided but i do like this i really enjoyed it um so for my first time having like a project planner slash like dump i don't know what's the best term for this dump notebook but i'm really happy with it i don't really need a hobonichi one to be honest like i don't use fountain pens so i think i thought i needed a hobonichi one but it didn't really um 
add up in terms of like usage and like whether or not it's factored in like the fact that it's Hobonichi. So yeah. Once I got my plotter, I did not expect abandoning most of my planning systems, but here we are. Let's talk a bit about this so far because the last video where I showed my plotter was like my mid-year review where I was just unboxing it. Right now I haven't archived it so you'll see a couple of pages on here. Let's go with the specs first. This is the plotter narrow in Pueblo leather. Um, this strap is by Knox actually, K-N-O-X. It was given to me by Job. A lot of people are asking about it. I have been using this uni style fit pen for um, jotting notes on my plotter because it has a lot of colors. Thanks to Michelle for getting this for me at M. Lovewell. I've been using this since, I'm gonna say July? Yeah, July. So the first part of the plotter uh, setup is actually my weekly view. So here's what my weekly view looks like. It's nothing really interesting. It's just really work stuff. So left-hand side is actually personal errands and also here on the left most is more appointments and then the right hand side is a mix of work requirements but not everything that I have to finish that day because I don't really have enough space for it so I usually have like the red marks for like things that are due but anything apart from that is more like um whether or not I needed to list something that I did or like key things that I have to really do on that day. But everything else goes through like uh, either a to-do list or my work planner or <laughs> to be honest, like I really like these like block, MD paper block note um, notepads, memo pads on my desk. I just grab and go with them. Um, yeah, I've been using this a lot and as you can see, it's still pretty much filled to the brim. And what happened is because this is so compact, my work planner actually got abandoned and I just ended up using this, especially when I went to the US for a month. I brought this and I've been using it diligently. Um, from time to time, I like having uh, little post-its that I stick on so that I need to note on things and it's very narrow as you can see. Um, I don't think that affects me any much because my handwriting is really small. Frequency of use, I bring this every single day. Every time I'm working outside, I'm in a cafe, if I'm, if I need to brainstorm, if I'm traveling, it just fits all my bags. So I think that is pretty much a good um, indicator of me using this as much as I want. So just to show you the division, the second division, by the way, shout out to Job, he gave me all of these dividers. I was like a plotter. Um, dummy when he gave me um, he handed me this uh, gift so I was like yeah he just gave me a lot of stuff to work on um, so here I have my two millimeter grid notepad insert slash I don't know what you call it but basically I added it to the ring system and I initially did not know what to do with it but as you can see, it has been filled to the brim and I think it's been serving its purpose. So I'm gonna show you, these are all, it's actually like, it's all meetings. I don't really have anything tangible to show you, but what I've been discovering recently is I write my to-dos here and then the ones that you see here on the weekly are like the short versions but everything else i write here and a day corresponds to a page um sometimes i do this especially when i'm working let's say at a cafe or a co-working space and i don't really have the liberty of opening a really big notebook so i just write everything here if i need to brainstorm last minute i write the flow here and everything so it's really just a big brain dump as you can see my kind of logging really requires me to dump a lot not even plan but just dump a lot of ideas um this one was like working on visa renewal you know a lot of admin things basically so it's been really great at that it's not the most organized and the best part about the ring system is if i don't want it i can just toss it so that i'm still working on but as you can see i don't really have a lot of pages here um, I really like this marker thing too because it kind of just you can just take it out and then put it in depending on where you want it but yeah I've been really happy about it as you can see I'm running out so I'm gonna refill it I've actually been deciding if I wanted to get a Bible size or an a5 and then 
or a mini or you know another plotter but i don't know if i actually want one because i just love everything about this like i love it so much and i don't really hype planners or systems that much but i think this has significantly changed my setup in a very good way so i would like to commend plotter for that i'm not paid to say it i just really enjoy it and it's nice it's so super customizable and i'm really excited to further use this along it isn't any obvious yes i'm going to be using this next year i already bought the 2025 monthly and weekly um insert and then I still have to figure out if I want to buy uh, blank papers and everything. So yeah, that I should probably do like a plotter video at the end of the year, start of the year, in case you're interested at what I'll be using. Let's start strong with the journals. Um, this is the Hobonichi Tetro original in English format. It's an entire year in this book. As you can see, it has been getting thicker and thicker by the minute. I was also so surprised that um, I had like so much views on my video about the Hobonichi Tetro. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, this one was initially just for daily logs, which I think I still think I've been doing quite frequently. As you can see, we have been very up to date. Let me show you a couple of pages from my October, yeah, so far. Um, frequency of use, yes, I still journal every day. If I'm not journaling every day, it's every other day or every three days, but generally I've just been doing the deed of getting all of my thoughts here on paper and yes i would like to use this again next year i think next year i'm really gonna cut down on um putting in stacks photos i think that's the main reason it's become really chunky and i even tried painting i'm like i'm not gonna do that because it really wrinkles the um the notebook so yes i will use this next year once again i already asked my good friend sophie to get me a copy um but yeah i got the english one once again and i got the a6 one i don't know if i'll still use the same cover i do love this camp cover but i might use uh, another cover that i previously owned so yeah i'm gonna think about that but yeah very happy about this it's my favorite thing that I've done this year. I've actually been so hesitant sharing a lot of pages from this, but right now I'm re very happy to show you some ideas and inspiration because it has significantly transformed my journaling habit. I was debating if I wanted to show you this, but yeah, I'll just show you my current A5 um, journals together because they're actually not very updated frequently so they're both a5 but the purposes are different i think okay let's start with this i think i have not mentioned this or i might have mentioned it in the past i don't remember but this is just a hobonichi plain notebook but it's um the design by dr makino the botanist father of botany in japan and um i didn't know what to do with it until one specific day in 2023 i felt really like compelled to like do a big word vomit so ever since then this has been like my catch-all journal i'll show you a page that's not super confi confidential like this was like my i sat down at a cafe i wrote on my birthday and then like it's my handwriting is very small and i wrote about my trip to japan but um, it's not, see, as you can see, I've only filled it up up to here. Right now, what I've been doing with this is every Saturday or Sunday, I go to a cafe, or if I'm lazy, I'll just journal at home. I'll write every single thing that happened in every single day. Not as a report, but how I felt about it. Like, you know how things happen and you don't, Sometimes you don't have time or space or room to actually feel your emotions and this has been an exercise for me to really understand how I'm feeling. I know like keeping a personal journal is very tricky for everyone because sometimes it also feels like a trauma dump so sometimes the more I write about it the more I feel heavily about it. Although I want to say like sometimes if I go through some bad things, I talk to friends about it but it's always nice to have like a little space where I just kind of write out with like no bias no judgment and this has been serving me well for that 
on a big contrast to that, this is actually my media journal. Um, I want to say that I have not figured out a proper system to catalog this, but I actually used it last year for a bit, like during November, December. I don't know why. Oh, I think it's because I didn't have um, I didn't have a techo yet. Okay, this is the recent one. So I actually started a booktube, which I have to update actually. So and I started reading again and this was my way of like summarizing everything that I've read so I started with putting like the book covers I actually printed these at the drugstore I didn't like the formatting so annoying anyway so I think I like the format in a sense that I have the cover here and then I can write the review here I also did that here but this one was a bit more I was still figuring out what format works, like whether or not that the poster or the cover should be on the left side and then the text is on the right. Um, for this particular book, I had a lot to say, so I, I used all of the blocks, but I think I'm going to resort back to this, this format. I really like it, where the cover is on the top and then the text is at the bottom. And it's just really straightforward for me and I really, really enjoy writing about my thoughts on books especially after you read the book and you're kind of like wait i need to like immediately write them down so this has been doing its job and i'm very happy about that and i realized that i don't need anything pocket size for that because i just mostly do media journaling on my desk and i don't bring it around so um i don't want to limit it to books as well as you can see these are a series so i'll probably like experiment on that and it's always easy to do media journaling because i can just write my reviews and they don't really take that much it's just super straightforward you know i just write and then i don't have to like a lot of full page i just have like small block and then that's it so very happy about this and i like how i design it still love it it's very timeless i think yeah this is yeah this has been from last year but it still is going to be used for next year my goal is to finish this up and read more so let's hope that goal stays in place for 2025 Lastly, on the daily journaling front, I wanted to share this experiment that I've been working on. So I've been thinking of having like a core memory slash highlights insert. And it the category is mostly like things I want to remember that happen in my daily life that not necessarily are just written on my Hobonichi Techo. So I finally pulled out the Traveler's Records insert. This was from 2022. And I actually started with the Bleachers concert that I attended in August. So this is like not, I didn't want to have a concert insert. I didn't want to have a specific insert for music. So I was like, wait, I think just having like highlights in general would be nice. So this was the Bleachers concert. This was the set list. And then eventually I kind of warmed up to the idea of like what I could journal that felt like it was a highlight kind of thing and they're not chronological and also they're not um, specifically like one every week or something it really depends on the things that happen or like if there's a common theme this is actually the first time I'm showing you this um, but yeah I've just been generally keeping ephemera and like been organizing this I really enjoy it I think I'm also going to add more pages especially now it's the fall season so I want to say next time when I do another volume of the highlights journal I'm gonna use the regular size because I feel like this is too small. That's that's my main concern. But I wanted to start small because I didn't want to overwhelm myself. But as you can see, it hasn't been that long, but I've already been like filling it up a lot. So I'm gonna be um, continuing this and I will share more formats and more ideas once I get the hang of um, this particular format. Last but definitely not the least, let's talk about my travel journals. So. So for this year, I actually used the Traveler's Notebook Passport setup more than the regular. The only reason I have regular is for my US trips, which were I went to LA and I went to New York and San Francisco. But everything else is documented here in the passport one. I, I want to say though, my US one is still unfinished. I'm but yeah, these are some pages from Station AFS, my two weeks 
well one week ish in new york and then um two ish weeks in the bay area and also like just in general like being in the u.s exploring teaching it's like a work and play kind of trip so it's been all over the place and as your girl's still not not done i just like yeah i just put like kind of like codes and stuff um this insert i've been using for like 2020 for europe trips only because Europe trips don't last me like more than two weeks. So it's usually like four days, five days. And I actually started it with Denmark, as you can see here. More of the photos and like have more in-depth look at the layouts and design ideas. I do have them on my Patreon this October for my journal tour. And I still have a couple pages because I'm saving it for actually a future trip in November. I'm really enjoying this passport format. I think also with the practicality of it being so small and easy to bring with me, I just have been exercising the habit of just bringing this particular journal for that reason. Use next year, I will obviously use both of these still next year. Um, with regards to whether or not I'll use a regular, I think it really depends on the trip itself. So this December, I'm going back to LA for family trip. I don't know if I'm gonna use the regular, probably might just whip out a new passport insert because I've already gone to LA and I didn't wanna have another big regular insert to, um, to fill up, especially with family trips. I feel like family trips are also tricky. I tend to document more when I'm traveling alone, traveling with a friend, or I have more time in my hands to actually explore the places on my own conditions and my own will. So yeah, that's a little update for my traveler's notebooks. I have surprisingly been a convert and I've been using both the brown um in the brown covers i think i really like them more i used to like the camel more or the olive now i'm like i kind of dig the brown yeah it's just been something that i've been like fond fond of fond of as of um as of currently so i hope that gave you some insights on my 2024 planners and journals I am still open to suggestions on what my actual work planner will be next year apart from using the plotter which I've been diligently using I actually have been just using like a bunch of loose paper and figuring out the best way to kind of organize these ideas in some way it also made me think how chaotic I can be and fully embracing that because I always thought that having a planner meant I had to like diligently update on that specific notebook, which I feel like is the case sometimes, but with the range of stuff I do, I like organized chaos. And I think having that in conjunction with having a planner sort of helps me kind of put things into perspective and then eventually refine and like narrow down my to-dos, especially if I'm working on a project or going through a specific task that requires me to do a lot of different um, action points. But yeah, in general, I think every year I will never get sick of the fact that I do have a specific set of requirements. And depending on the season of life I'm in, every year the systems are always different. The only thing that remains the same is I plan and I journal, and those are two different things. And yeah, let me know in the comments what your plans are for your planners and journals next year and what you have discovered, I guess, from your systems this year. It's really interesting to see how everyone has their own opinions and how they kind of take shape. We're all probably using the same journal and have different ways of um, documenting and how it affects our daily lives and whether or not it's useful for your system or your goals so yeah let me know in the comments i'll see you in the next video and happy autumn happy october and um, let me know what you've been looking forward to now that it's colder and it's more cozy i guess i'll see you soon and take care always be creating bye